Hello, welcome to TalksOnMed.com. Today I'm going to talk about what are object literals. First I'm going to show you a simple example and um, then I'm going to show you two types of code. The first is a very messy kind and then the second version we use object literal to make that code much more cleaner and avoid namespace collisions. So if you look at line number two, we're creating a simple object by saying new object and assigning it to a variable. Then on line 5, you have object literal notation. This is a simpler way of creating an object. In most pro object oriented programming languages, you first create a class and then you create an object from it. In JavaScript, it's a little bit differently. And if you keep following this tutorial, hopefully you'll be a, a little bit more clearer. Uh, now let's look at this code. If you've never seen object literal notation before, what you'll notice is a property on the property name on the left hand side then the value for that property on the right hand side is separated by a colon and then the next property is separated by a comma so this is pretty much the notation you need to know now let's jump over to the code to see how we can really make use of this now here's some really untidy code that I've created in the past 10 minutes um, from my past experience when I look at somebody else's code they have a lot of features in it you know, in the JavaScript code, has a lot of features in it. So what that means is you're looking at about 20 functions. Aside from those 20 functions, you're looking at a lot of variables that are defined globally. And you have no idea which variable belongs to the feature you're trying to edit. So now you have to go through about 10 functions to figure out the logic and also find out which functions are the ones you need to focus on. Because many times they're not even commented. So let me scroll through this code so you get an idea of what the typical problem is. So here are our global variables. No idea which one belonged to which feature. Then here's another function. Here's a separate function. Here's another one and so on. Okay, I haven't added the code because I just need to give you an idea of the problem. So now what we're going to do is let's make this a little more organized by using op object literal notation. Now what I'm going to do is create an object literal called link feature and then I'm going to create variables inside of it. So at the very top what we were doing was creating variables and we had no idea whom they belong to, what feature they belong to. Now what I'm going to do is create an object literal for every feature that I'm creating on the website. So here's my first feature, link feature then I take all the variables that are associated to this particular feature and define them inside of that object literal. Okay, notice again the name of the property values on the left hand side, the values on the right hand side, and they're separated by a colon. The next property is separated by a comma. Now aside from just defining variables, you can also define functions within object literals. So that's what I did. I defined the link feature object literal and then I put all the functions that are related to that feature in one object literal. So you don't have to go and look through the whole JavaScript file just to edit one feature. You can easily say well here's the object literal, here's the features. The function I need to edit is probably going to be within this particular area. It makes your code much more organized and the person editing is even if it's you can easily jump to the location they need to. You'll notice that here are all the functions and now here's feature number two form checker and it's another object literal and I define all the variables that are related to this feature inside of it and all the functions that are related to it inside that object literal. Now if uh, you don't know how to call this particular object or make use of it which you should by now I mean but Let's go through it anyway. You type the name of the object literal, then you put a dot, and easily call the function that you want. In this case, I'll call check. And this will make a call to this, and the function, your code will start executing, whatever it is. So now you've seen that we've organized our code much more easily, as opposed to the mess that it was before and we've avoided namespace collisions. What are namespace collisions? It's basically 
right now there are let's say four or five six variables that you have and there are two features within this JavaScript file but if later on you keep adding more and more features what you'll notice is you're gonna create more code which might use the name of the same variable that you've already defined and that's gonna cause a logical error to avoid these logical errors you can easily again go to object literal notation and I can define another object literal notation with the same variable inside of it and it won't cause a collision because it's in a different variable scope hopefully this was helpful to you if it wasn't and you want to leave some feedback please let me know thank you